Hello DIY friends, welcome back to the channel. So in today's quest, I'm continuing to try to figure out what the short circuit error is on my travel trailer. If you look at our last video, just go back one video, we, last week we replaced all the, the brakes on the camper uh, with the primary culprit and focus being the worn out magnetic uh, connectors that are on the bottom that actually drive the brakes and make them operate. What happens is the winding inside of these, when they get exposed and they start to touch the drum of the camper, it sends that short circuit message up to the brake controller, which I'm getting right now in my Prodigy brake controller right here. If you see, that's what it looks like. It comes, it says short circuit, and then it magically goes away while I'm driving. So, uh, interesting phenomenon. So, We've addressed the magnets and uh, hopefully that fixes it. But if not, there's another issue that plagues many travel trailers. And today I'm going to go after that. In the last video, we never hooked up the wiring to the camper. And that's what we're going to focus on today. The challenge being, and uh, it almost actually maybe seems likely, but inside of the trailer axles is where the most of the manufacturers have decided and chosen to run the brake wires. And I get their thinking. You're going to protect that wire. You don't want any road debris snagging on it, pulling it and potentially disabling the, disabling the brakes on your camper. But also what happens is those wires sit in the inside of a piece of rough black pipe tubing and they're bouncing and rubbing around for years and the insulation wears off of the wires and exposes them and short circuits and also gives you a short circuit message. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna pull all new wiring under there and attach it to the outside of the axle so that it will not be rubbing on the inside. Uh, and what we're also gonna do is we're gonna pull out the old wiring and take a look at it. Maybe it'd be really great to just physically see some damage there and know for certain that that, that was uh, what the issue was. So uh, stay tuned and I'll show you what we'll do. So the wiring solution that I've chosen is to buy some extension cord from the hardware store. It's good 14 gauge copper stranded wire. It's made for outdoors. It's heavy duty. And I'm also going to put it inside this plastic jacket that you can also get from your local hardware store or Harbor Freight, actually where I got both of these. And then I'm going to zip tie this with heavy duty zip ties to the top back of the axle or where it will be protected from hitting debris on the highway. Uh, my camper also has 14 gauge wiring leading from the power source to where it pops out from underneath the camper near the axles. So this will be a continuous 14 gauge wiring solution that will get to all four wheels. I think it's going to be pretty durable. This is, uh, this is made to be outside and weathered, so I'm pretty confident that this is going to be a good solution. Okay, so we're under the camper now, and you can see what I've done is I've taken the electrical cord shielded by the extra insulation, and I use heavy duty zip ties, and I put them all across the back side of the axle. You're looking at the back side of the camper. The front is that way and you're back here. So uh, it's high and tight. If anything from the road should uh, bounce up and hit the bottom of the camper, uh, chances are this is going to be pretty well protected. Uh, admittedly, it's not as protected as being inside the axle, but I think this is about the best solution that you can get. It's high and tight uh, and it uh, should be pretty well protected. And then what I've done is uh, on each end here, I've got, I've left myself enough cable to work with. Uh, once again, this is a 14 gauge electrical cord, so it's pretty heavy duty. It also happens to match the, uh, the gauge of the wiring coming from the power source in my camper, so it's the same gauge of wire. And, uh, and also, the reason I chose just to use some extension cord is that it's made to be exposed to the elements, be outdoor, and be pretty heavy duty. So I think it's a good choice to, uh, to use for the brakes. So uh, what we're going to do, oh, also one last thing, I only need two wires on each one of these, and of course an extension cord comes with three because it's got a ground. I'm just going to discard one of the wires and not use it, and I only need two. So I think this is a pretty good solution. So now what we're going to get to is connecting this to the trailer brakes that were here from uh, last time when we put the new units on. So let's get these connected, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll wrap this job up. All right, now that I've got my wires all stripped, I decided to go ahead and cut off the black lead, and I'm just going to use the green and the white lead from the extension cord. Uh, once again, this is 14 gauge copper stranded wire. And what I'm going to connect these to, my, uh, my wires are here from the back of the, uh, the brake units that we just replaced. And just a note on this in case you're wondering, well, wh which way do I wire them? The magnets on the camper do not have any polarity, positive or negative. You could wire them either way, as long as that magnet gets 12 volts. It, uh, it will turn into a magnet and start applying your trailer brakes. So all we have to do is connect these in any particular order and they will work. What I'm going to be using today are some of these crimpable uh, waterproof connectors that you just crimp them down and heat them up and it will become waterproof. So let's get to that. Thank you. 
All right, now that those connectors are all crimped down, all we gotta do is put a little heat on them and they'll shrink down and they'll become watertight. I'm gonna use a little butane torch to get that done. This is sort of controlled destruction here. And there you go. These should be watertight. I think what I may do is just get a little clear silicone sealant and just go around the edges of these just to be safe. And also in the middle, my crimper sort of makes a tiny little puncture where it cuts it, where it uh, pushes it down, and that could potentially affect it. Okay, so rinse and repeat that process on all four of your wheels and you're pretty much wired up. Again, these are not uh, specific. You can go either way with them since the magnets don't have any polarity. Just do the same thing that you're doing. Uh, you know, choose the same cu couple of wires to make sure you don't accidentally uh, leave an open circuit. If you're going to use the green and white like I did, do it on all four. And what I'm going to do next now, here's the, uh, here's the offending wires that we're suspicious of. As you can see, there's the hole in the axle, and these wires are right in the axle, and it goes all the way across to the other side and pops out a little hole there as well. I'm going to pull these out now from both axles. Let's take a look at them, see if we can't find anything suspicious. It'll be interesting to see if there uh, is a visible tear in the wires that could be causing our short circuit. So I'm going to do that next and we'll take a look. Okay, so I pulled both the wires out of our axle tubes and uh, I think it's safe to say we found ourselves what we could call a smoking gun here. Uh, this is just one example for you, but this is right smack in the middle of the wire in the axle tube. This wire, just from dancing around inside the axle over the years, has worn all the way through. And that's bare copper wire you're looking at that was touching the axle tube. There's your short circuit. This is just one. I've got several of them on both of the cables. So we can say we positively identified the cause of our short circuit. And uh, lesson learned. You know, I, I salute the, the manufacturers, Alco and the others that do it to uh, try and protect the wires. Their, their intentions are good by putting the wire inside the axle, but as you can see, their protection was ultimately the cause of a short circuit. So uh, lesson learned. So I think we're, uh, we're good to go now. We'll just button this job up and call it done. So thanks again for coming along to solve the mystery of the short circuit. We replaced all the magnets on the camper and the brakes with them to possibly solve it that way. But today we've without a doubt found out that we had a short circuit on the wire in the axle as was also suspected. We've upgraded from uh, this rather kind of wimpy looking cable that was rubbing inside the axle to something more substantial and also double protected on the outside of the axle where it can't be harmed at least by abrasion from rubbing inside the axle anymore. I realize it is outside the axle and there is the possibility it could get snagged on something, but I've done everything I can to prevent that from happening. Uh, that scenario is a maybe and a what if. I think I can say with confidence that the wire inside the axle is a definite and a when. So I still think this is an upgrade even though there is some liability having it outside the axle tube. So thanks for coming along. Um, I just want to say uh, this last camping trip that I took that showed the short circuit failure, I was coming down a large hill and in high winds and it was a very, very dangerous situation. Typically in a situation like that, you can pull on your, the manual switch for your trailer brakes and you can control the trailer sway. Well, my trailer started swaying and the moment that, that when I needed those brakes the most, they weren't there and the short circuit error occurred. So thanks to the grace of God, we got off that hill, we got home safely that day. And I just wanna encourage you, if you've got wiring going through the axles of your trailer, consider doing what I did, pulling them out and rewiring and keep your family safe. So there you have it. Thanks for coming along with the way with this series. And until next time, do it yourself.